Hey everybody, White Beard Ann here. I know it's been a while. Um, I know in my last video I said, oh, i just <laughs> gone for a little bit. My daughter pointed out you were gone for like two years, bro. So... So, yeah, I've been gone a while, lots happened. Um, so interesting, like throughout the two years, you know, like the world's kind of been kind of crazy and, you know, things are still happening. People are still getting married, still people are still getting divorced. And a lot of those of you that are getting divorced, especially men have reached out to me and asked me questions. Um, I've decided that I'm gonna really focus the channel much more on like divorce and divorced men in particular, probably because that's kind of my lens and where I'm coming from. Um, one of the reasons is when I was going on the divorce journey, so to speak, there really wasn't a lot of things out there. Um, you know, I'm a YouTube guy, I'm a teacher, I'm a learner, so some of this stuff really resonated with me. I was looking for people to kind of go on that same, you know, like whatever journey, what, you know, the, the same struggle. So it really wasn't out there. So I figured, you know, listen, uh, why, why not put it out there? Like I said in my last video, most of this stuff for half the time is really more for me than it is for you. If it helps anybody out there, by all means, I'm like, you know, like they say, you can't keep it unless you give it away. Okay. Today's video, you can tell by the title, are like really the five things you should do when you're getting a divorce. Now, when I'm talking about getting divorced, you've decided this is it, we're moving on, we're, you know, we're gonna split up, however that goes. Obviously, I would say 100%, if you are getting a divorce, you should definitely get a lawyer. Um, because the thing is, as much as you think that, like, you know, you might have a great relationship and you could do it smoothly, the, 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 law, the documents, the agreements, the, the legal documents really protect you and her as well. Um, so like, it's really kind of important. So I always say, listen, I am not a lawyer. I am, I am just some guy who's been married and divorced a couple of times and I've been just been through the experience. So I obviously consult with somebody. That's the disclaimer, so to speak, on the video. You should definitely, before pursuing any divorce, contact a lawyer for sure. But once you've kind of done that, you put those things into play, here's the five things that I did that really framed how I came through the divorce, how I set up everything. You know, hopefully these all work for you. The first one, number one, is uh, you need to get your own place. Now, it, it depends, like some, you know, some folks are not in a situation where they can just go and rent an apartment or buy a house, but to be honest with you, this is probably the biggest step you're gonna need to do is get your own space because you're not gonna be able to move on with your life until you have your own space, your own furniture. When I first moved into my you know tiny little apartment, I still love it. Um, you know, it's all I can afford, but listen, I didn't have a lot of furniture. And over the past two years, I've acquired some furniture, got some stuff, and you know, now it's all mine and it's great. And you know, I like, I'm very happy to have that luxury of having my own stuff in my own apartment. But listen, there's people moving into vans. There's people, you know, doing whatever you gotta do to get away. Because the thing is, is now you've decided that you're getting divorced and you're moving on from one another. And part of that is to live separately. It is not gonna be a situation where it's gonna be conducive for your own growth and development to, to still be in that situation. Especially if it's a situation where you're being abused or like not, I just, it's not a really good space. You should need to start with your own space. I always, you know, I am not a, one of those people that will kind of sugarcoat things. I don't really lay it out on the line. Usually, most of you that are watching is probably a little bit older, but if you are younger, you know, that is one of the things you should be, have, be able to do on your own generally. As a man, you should be able to go and get your own place, be able to, you know, provide for yourself, provide your own clothing, basic needs. Um, so these are some of the things that I think will really kind of help you start building up, like reframing your life. The first thing, get your own place. Yeah, the second thing you should definitely be doing as soon as you get divorced or kind of in the process of getting divorced is you need to find a coach or a therapist or a mentor or reconnect with an old friend. Something that where you're having, you have to be able to bounce some of the stuff off of another person. Um, 
I mean, I was fortunate enough, like, you know, I had some really great people around me. I had some people who were going through the same thing as me. But the thing is, is many of you, you know, might be having, you know, a situation where your divorce, you're, you lose all your friends because you and your, your ex were so tied up with one another and you all had the same friends. And so a lot of the things that, that you guys did together are now gone. So you might have to find somebody else to connect with. You might have lost that those confidants. And, you know, it, it's a very weird situation if, you know, your, your ex and you are sharing that same person. Like, you don't want to do that to, even to that person. Like, that's not even, like, cool. So... I lucked out. I was one of these people. I got, you know, I went through it all, right? I went and got a coach. Um, the coach was really great as far as, like, focusing me on what my priorities were, my career, really getting that to go. And that's, like, another step that, you know, I'll talk about. But really having somebody to kind of, like, be a check valve for you. Somebody's kind of, like, putting, you know, you in in your place so to speak so that was really really important um the other thing is too is like there's a lot of mental health issues and again another video for me you know it, it, it was really beneficial to, to get a coach but there is a lot of mental health issues that are involved and you know if you, you need to see a therapist by all means please i am like a big proponent of seeing a therapist um, there's a lot of insight you can get from it. There's a lot of strategies you can learn, especially if you're struggling. So, you know, all of those things you kind of really need to reach out and put into your life. They're, you know, people are not going to bang on your door and say, oh, so sorry, I heard you got a divorce. Like, oh, let's go hang out. Yeah, you might have some buddies. And yeah, I, by all means, connect with some of those old buddies. You know, there's, there's some real value in, you know, like reconnecting with trusted old friends who really knew you when. Because, you know, the thing is, is... Like, you need as many people in your life right now that'll kind of just make sure that, you know, you don't go off the rails. There's a... I'm going to do another video about divorce and grief because essentially you are going through a stage of grief or the five stages of grief when you're getting divorced it might have occurred quickly you might have gone through different components of it but it is definitely a thing and definitely you should be aware of it as you go through it so yeah that's my number two thing find somebody you need to find somebody that you can speak to can you know confide in um you know, whether that be a coach, whether it be a therapist, whether it be a mentor that you had, whether it be, you know, a best friend, whatever, but it should be somebody that's not connected to your ex, for sure. That's one of the big things. Okay, number three, get to work. What you really want to be able to do is just focus on what it is that you're passionate about, what it is that you do. It is the one thing that I will say that during the first couple of months or even the first year or so of my divorce, I was probably more productive professionally than I ever was at any point in my entire life. Um, just really putting my nose to the grind, focusing on what's at stake. Obviously, right, especially, you know, the first two steps was just really like, you know, getting your own place and, and finding, you know, a mentor. Those are going to be the first two steps to get you solid. But at the end of the day, you got to finance this thing. And how are you doing? What is your hustle? Whether it's, you know, working in your office, whether it's, you know, DoorDash, whether it's, you know, working down at Wall Street, whatever it is you do that, you know, that that's how you create a living, that's probably the thing you should focus on the most um, for right now. Um, the, the, there's a lot of things you can control. Obviously, if you're thinking about moving careers, this is a really crazy, weird time. Like a lot of people are out of jobs. Um, people, like industries are completely changing. The landscape of wor the workforce is completely changing because of the virtual nature of everything. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. If there was ever a time to make a change, you know, career-wise, now is probably the, a good time as any. Um, I know for me, back when 9-11 happened, that was kind of like the impetus for me to go back to school and totally change my trajectory. So there's these events throughout our lives, whether it's divorce, whether it's a pandemic, whether it's 9-11, there's all different things that kind of occur that will make you change the way you frame what you do for a living, what it is that you drive. Listen, I, you know, I've had every job from working with teamsters to working with teachers, you know, working with my hands, like it, there's value in all of it. I've learned something from all of them. I learned one thing that I can learn, earn a living doing a lot of different things. Um, and I think that's kind of one of the things that you want to be doing when you're first navigating the early divorce situation is get to work, focus on your career, focus on what it is that's going to support you going forward. 
especially, you know, we haven't even spoken about, but like, especially if you have to pay child support or alimony, you're gonna have to earn because the thing is, is a portion of your, your pay might be going out the door and you're gonna have to figure out a way to compensate for that. So like I said, number three, get to work. You gotta get back to your hobbies, get back to what drives you. Find those things that are passion you're passionate about. It could be mountain biking, it could be going to the gym, it could be building models, whatever it is, you need to find something that you do that's, that's just you. Um, I remember when I, like one of the, when things were just not going well, one of the things that was just really good to know is that, you know, listen, I could get on my bike, I could go off into the woods, you know, do my thing, you know, get some flow on, kind of get distracted. You need that. I mean, it's really, really kind of important that we have those those vices. Um, listen, there's a lot of healthy ways to have, you know, your solitary things that you do on your own. That's yours. You know, I'm lucky out now. Listen, biking was something I've always done. It was something that I've always kind of um, done as a kid. And now I'm watching my son do it. And, you know, planning trips with him and going mountain biking. So that's something that, you know, that was always personal to me that I've kind of like now doing again. And, you know, it's really kind of nice falling back in love with that. Um, hitting the gym, you know, those are other ways. Just, you know, to get the exercise in. It is really super important that you're doing something to find balance, especially if you're working, if you're going to be working super hard. If you're going to be putting your, you know, you're all in it to, to your career, you got to find the balance. Work hard, play hard. When I hire somebody, one of the things we ask them is, hey, how do you find balance? How do you, what are you the things you do to kind of distract yourself from every day? If you're going to go all in, you need a space where you can kind of go all out, whether that's getting on a bike, whether that's going for a run, whether that's picking up some weights, um, whether it's building a model, whatever it is, you want to find something, but get a hobby, get a distraction, get something that, you know, you're kind of cool about, whatever it is, collecting coins, something, but really super important. That's a big piece of the puzzle. The final thing, and, and one of the things that, that's, um, it's about finding your why, getting a plan. What is your vision? You've heard it a million times for all these motivational places. I talked about like, you know, where are you going? Where are you heading? Like, what are, like, what are the steps you need to do to get there? Um, it is very hard to wander through life without a plan. I remember my dad, one of the things he used to say to me is a man without a plan ain't a man. And I never knew what he meant, but as I've gotten older, I've recognized that the only times that I'm really super productive in my life or if I'm getting anything done is if I'm moving towards something. So whatever it is, it's super, super important that you have some sort of plan. Um, now, you're coming out of divorce. There's a couple things you need to plan, right? Obviously, you're planning about trying to get some of the things, like a house, like getting your career, like getting those things settled. But what is the plan for you long term? Um, what is the plan if you're, a if you're a parent and a shared parent? What is the plan for that? What is your plan for the kids? I'm going to do other videos where I talk about, like, you know, hanging out with your kids and you know, shared custody and typically if you're a male, you're gonna have less time with your kids than than, than your than the mother. Um, it's just the way it is, no matter what state or country you live in, women will have predominantly more rights than men, it's just the way it is. Um, but you, you know, there's, you can work within those parameters. I do, you know, and, and you can, and I'm gonna kinda of give you some of those tips, but I had a plan. What is the plan? What is my vision for what my relationship looks like for them, for my kids? What is the plan that it looks like for my relationship for how I'm walking out in the world? Um, what is my plan for my career? How am I going to better myself? What is my plan to sign up for a gym? You know, all of these things. Just plan, plan, plan. Think, think, think. Even if, you know, we're right now, we're in, most of us are, you know, all of us are in the, the grips of this pandemic. Depending on where you are, you, you, you know, some of you can't go out. So this is a really good time to plan. Do the research. Look at stuff. Look at things that you want to do. When this thing is over, what is going to happen? Because it is going to be over, right? It's, this is, we're not going to be stuck in our houses forever. They, they, they are still making, you know, high-end cars. They are still building houses. They are still planning for the world to move on. And it will, in spite of all of this. You know, we're really a smart, resilient, you know, species and 
we will get through this. And then the thing is, is then what are you going to do to get through this? There's all there's a lot of opportunities out there. There's a lot of people that, um, you know, like the economy, all of those things have changed. So don't look them as, you know, look at it as something that's, you know, it's bad. Looking at something as like opportunities for you to, to seize upon. But you're not going to be able to do that without a plan. And that's the that's one of the big things that, that I really stress. Get a plan together. Those are my five things that you, you should really be doing when you first get a divorce. You definitely want to get your own place, for sure. You want to get your, you know, get a coach, get a therapist, get a confidant, somebody to kind of be there to wrap this up. Get to work, get a job, get focused on your career. What is the next step for you financially? Get a hobby, you know, like, sorry, exercise. Hobbies are huge. I, you know, like I build models, I ride bikes, you know, reconnect with things you used to do back in the day. Those are the things that are, you know, they're gonna really kind of drive you and obviously get a plan. What's your vision? What's that going forward? So I hope these steps help. And if you enjoy them, please, I encourage you to subscribe and uh, leave comments below. I think comments are turned on, so you can leave it be. If there's something you wanted me to talk about, by all means, I'll jibber jab about anything. And as always, drive fast, take chances, make good choices. Peace.